Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Geist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Warrior, Chewed Up, Spit Out, and Stepped On. And this was a pretty decent episode. We got more movement along the uh, Tong War front, but we also got more stuff with what was going on with Bill and his kind, and also with Buckley and the Mayor. And those were kind of just like, eh, not really that important. And I still don't, I mean, I can understand how they can come and influence the main plot, but I kind of just rather would have had them focus on the Tongs in Chinatown and Awesome and everything going on there. I mean, I understand trying to have touch tones for the time period, but while Bill's predicament is interesting, it really doesn't add that much to the plot. So we start off this episode and we see that there's a celebration going on in Chinatown for Chinese New Year and that's pretty all well and good. We also see that at this point in time Awesome is with Penny in uh, her studio place and they're banging. So, and of course that kind of syncs up to what's going on in the parade because as they're getting ready to climax we see that this one dude is giving a package by uh, one of the Long Z. And we see that Father June gets on this interesting podium thing and the dude goes by and hucks a stick of dynamite at him to blow him up. And, of course, that's where we get the double climax. It's like, holy crap, but Bolo was able to see it in time and knock Father June off the stage and he's all right. Now, granted, we learn later in the episode that there was one fatality and three more were injured. So I was like, okay, that pretty much sucks. So we then devolve into the two main stories of the episode of them trying to figure out what's going on and centering more on Young June and Awesome, and then Bill's whole story. Bill's story pretty much throughout this episode deals with him having to do his uh, debt repayment to Jack Damon. And of course he doesn't have all the money together when Jack comes to the house and pretty much threatens the, his kids and his wife and everything. And he's like, I'll get it to you. So then he goes and plays mind games with Leary. And he didn't know that Jack had come back and was working with the Fung Hai. And so he's like, hey, why don't you let me deal with this? So they get Jack to come down to the bar. And it makes it look like he's doing the payment. But then Leary's like, all right, I'll uh, fight you for it. And this is a pretty brutal fight that we had on. We've seen that Leary is a pretty competent boxer. Well... Boxer slash street brawler. And him and Jack going at it was pretty intense. But, of course, he gets to the upper hand and just starts mercilessly beating on him. And he gets to the point where he's almost there to kill him. But he puts the onus onto Bill. And I think this is the first time he's had to really wrangle with what his vices have done to him. Where he's like, listen, you need to kill him now. Because if you let him go, Fung Hai are going to... Get him back together. He's going to not like what's up with his face. And he's going to come after you and, his, and your family. And he just gives him Jack's weapon of choice. Pretty much that kind of cudgel hammer thing. And walks off. And Jack, of course, is pleading saying, I won't do it. I won't come after you. I won't come after you. But Bill decides to do it. And he had also gotten Lee to look after his family. And Lee had been all that night sitting on the porch with a shotgun. He had a little bit of a conversation with of course Bill's wife and she berates him for not being that good of a liar and about all the whole kind of situation and everything was like okay we'll see how that goes but Bill decides to kill him he comes home and he doesn't tell Lee what is going on he's like all right fine walks off he goes into the house and he starts crying and being screwed up over what he did because he took that into his hands. If he didn't gamble like he did, if he didn't, if he had strategized better, he wouldn't have gotten into a situation where he had to kill a man to make sure that him and his family were safe. And he recognizes that he has done something that he can't really come back from. So it's like, okay, really doesn't really affect the narrative that much, but all right. We'd also seen throughout the episode that him and Lee were kind of trying to figure out what was going on in the Chinatown uh, attack, but it really doesn't amount to much. 
all of that movement is more on Young Jun and Ah Sung. Of course, before we get into what was going on with Father Jun and Young Jun, we see that Ah Sung gives us a little bit more information upon what was going on with his sister, mainly with let's see the Sun Yang story, where evidently they'd heard about this like one do like over in another kind of province or whatnot, and him and his friends went over, and he fought with this guy, and he accidentally killed him. He wasn't even trying to hit him that hard, and he fell down and smacked his head and died. Well, his father was the warlord, and he wanted to go after Asum, and his sister married him to save her brother. And he always laments the fact that he should have been the one to save her. And he brings up this thing of like, Look, it looks like she saved herself. I'm like, um, she's become pretty much just as horrible a person as that warlord. If that's saving yourself, uh, that's not really that good. You know, uh, I get what she's trying to get at by saying that statement, but it's like, you don't understand that his sister's essentially trying to make a tongue war pop off. That could kill a lot of people. And a lot of innocent people too. So uh, maybe you need to know what's going on. Mm. But that's about the extent that we get Penny throughout this episode. Also then comes back. He hooks up with uh, Young Jun. You figure out what's going on. He's like, hey, all right, I got your back. And of course, the other people of the Hopway are trying to figure out what's going on. But Young Jun's like, hey, pretty much goes Sonny and the Godfather. And we need to scrap. And, of course, Asam and Bolo have his back on that matter. And so they go to the Feng Hai territory, and they have this really awesome barroom brawl. And, granted, Asam and uh, Father Jun, Young Jun uh, do have some nice techniques in here, but this is really where Bolo is going to shine as he's doing all this shit. And, of course... We get to the end of it, and Young Jun uses the gun on someone, and Austin's like, you had that the whole time? They come in, and they see Bolo has, like, wrecked the place, and it's like, good God. And while we're going on with that, we usually we get into this side part where we see that uh, the mayor and uh, Buckley meet with the senator, and he, of course, wants to run for president, and tells the mayor to get his shit together for what's going on, because... It'll make him look ineffective if like people are being murdered everywhere. And Buckley then follows him out. We figured that Buckley's in with this dude too. And he's like working all these all different angles. And I mean, it's cool for that kind of intrigue, kind of reminiscent of kind of a Game of Thrones stuff, but it doesn't really serve the overall narrative. I'm more interested in Asa and what's going on with the Tongs than I am with this at the moment. Granted, it informs what's going on with the Tongs, but. It's not presented and executed in enough manner to be like, oh, this is really important. It's just mainly, oh, Buckley's playing everybody to try and get out of here. All right. So, we see that the head uh, of the Long Z has figured out what's going on, and he knows that shit's going to get real. He says that we need to assume that, like, everybody's a target because of this attack, uh, but of course, the Hopway roll by and leave one of the Fung Hai dead there. Uh, he immediately is like, uh, what have you done to uh, my Ling? And it's like, jeez. Uh, He's not as dumb as she would think. So we see that Father June and uh, Long Z meet, and they're pretty much coming to terms, and... Of course, Father Jun's like, hey, we take out the Feng Hai. Those are my conditions for peace. And they shake. Of course, Young Jun's like, why are we even doing this? And, of course, Father Jun's talking about how to do diplomacy and all that and how to go to war. And this is part of it. And we then get to Long Z, get into his side group and says, nope, he's pretty much going to kill me. And from the way it looks... I don't disagree with Father June. He is, because this attack happened, because rogue factions and elements within Long Z's Tong have decided to make moves against his Tong, he needs to take out the Long Z, and he needs to take out Long Z. 
He has lost control of his people, and he can't effectively manage them. And he even says that as he's going by. He's like, hey, it was just a courtesy thing as he's pretty much getting ready to take him out. And I don't disagree with those tactics. He is supposed to be one of the head ones at enforcing the peace. Now, they either need to follow his rule because they respect him or because they fear him. And evidently, Mai Ling believes that she knows more and wants and can utilize fear as a better tactic than Long Z could as respect. Father June does a mix of both, using the beatings and the fear of repercussions of acting badly towards him with the respect that gets earned for following orders and everything. So, we'll kind of have to see how this pans out. I'm really looking forward to how these tongues are going to fight together and if maybe my Ling and the rest of them take out Long Z before the Hopway have a chance to. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe and I hope you have a good day.